Hey folks, I just wanted to post a short little video concerning lithic technology. I had discussed this point yesterday as being uh, a closed point, and I noticed I got some questions in regards to, well, that's not typically what we think of when that when we talk of Clovis, that, that looks a little weird to be a Clovis point. And I totally understand that, so I just wanted to give a little overview or discussion about what makes that Clovis and some of the variation we see in Clovis um, Clovis lithic technology. Now most of us when we think of Clovis we're talking we're, we immediately think of a point like this. It's you know fairly narrow, has nice well-defined flute channels and uh, deeper um, auriculate base with nice pointed ears and ground edges. Um, and that's true I mean that that is a Clovis point. But there's a lot of variation within the Clovis type and I just want to give you know kind of a, a discussion of maybe why that is in case some of you may not be aware of it. Um, these are all casts, of course, um, and I can direct you to where you can find these if you're interested. But uh, they provide a nice glimpse at some of the variation we see in Clovis. This here is a St. Louis style Clovis. It's actually from Alabama. Um, but this is very large and very, very thin and has a flute channel that extends almost all the way to the tip, which is almost more of a Cumberland trait. This is not a Cumberland, of course, but this is a lot different than this or this or any of these here and so you know basically the type itself has a lot of variation in it um, here's another one from New York these both are actually from the Northeast this is from the lamb site actually but you know of course we see all this variation but that by no means make that makes this just a Clovis point because, yeah, there's you know not a point in here that exactly matches this one. So what makes this a Clovis point? Well, whenever we look at some publications here, I've got Clovis Technology by Bradley Collins and Hemmings. We they discuss Clovis Technology as a continuous, um, basically tools were used in a continuous uh, reduction scenario where we have bifaces being used as cores. Basically, the flakes struck off these bifaces were used by people on the go in their everyday tasks. Now as these bifaces became smaller their usefulness as a core would have diminished and eventually these here this artifact here would have been transformed if they didn't lose it beforehand into Clovis points. Maybe such as this or maybe such as this as I'll show you. Some of the the uh, traits of these bifaces are these large bifacial thinning flakes, also known as overshot flakes or ultra passe flakes. Um, these flakes tend to start at one edge and go to the other edge. This one, of course, has some nice, just non-invasive pressure flaking on it, but it tends to make the the cross section of these things very flat. As as reduction would continue, you'd end up with more of a lanceolate leaf-shaped blade in terms of this. Now fluting, as Bradley et al. discussed, could have, continu could have been performed at any, uh, any stage through here. It's just basically uh, a flake removal from the base to keep the base in um, you know, a similar form with the rest of the biface. If that doesn't make sense to you, oftentimes if we just remove flakes from the edges, and only from the edges will end up with a base that's really, really thick back here. And it would be hard to half such a tool. So oftentimes a flake is needed to run up through the base. So fluting doesn't necessarily have to occur in the last stage by any means. And it, as you can see here, we've got a lot of the same traits going on. Those same traits that are depicted here are what's going on with this biface. We have big, broad flakes, a thin cross-section, relatively thin anyway, with short, non-invasive pressure flakes and basal thinning strikes, very similar to this one here. Now, in some of the later stages, instead of just leaving the point as this, with these broad, massive um, reduction scars, and then just rework of the point and then fluting, they may actually go in and pressure flake the biface, which gives it more of a well-defined cross-section. With that cross-section then, it actually gives them a ridge from which to, um, to either flute the point or just, you know, 
uh, basically thin the biface just a little bit. Some people would not consider that a flute. I mean, there's some disagreement on what constitutes a flute. Is it one that you know goes up one third of, of the biface and terminates, or is it just a, a short little dinky flake, if you will? That, of course, is what we normally think of when we think of fluting. So, I mean, you call it what you will, but it's basically the same operation. They're just thinning the biface from the base. Um, Here's a nice little overview summary of I didn't lose it of the reduction scenario where you have large bifaces and the continued reduction um, down to a projectile point. Even these, as a glare on that picture, even these don't have these broadly defined flute channels in them. Um, so, you know, just going by the flute alone isn't enough to qualify something as Clovis or not. Um, Here again, you have your leaf-shaped blades before these bifaces become actual projectile points. And this is where this one fits in, and this point here would just be a latter version. This point here would be a latter version of this after it was reworked and, and used. So, through that reworking and use, <clears throat> they tend to take on the projectile point shape. Um, they can look like the one I just showed you, the actual artifact itself, or they can look like this cast here with these nice well-defined flute channels. This is typically a trait we see in the east though. There is some variation. I'm not saying that every Clovis point in the west looks like this because that's certainly not true. But there's variation. Here in the east we don't see this overshot flaking so much where these bifaces are being used like this. We tend to see just Clovis points themselves. The bifaces don't seem to be treated that way. and It's probably just issues or differences in reductive trajectory and uh, how the bifaces were being used. It doesn't appear that they're being used as core so much. So in a sense the bifaces are being reduced and the overall points have more of a well-defined uh, cross-section, a lenticular cross-section, and the points thus have longer flutes such as this. So Hopefully that clarifies some of the issues for you. Um, I realized it was a little rough around the edges, my discussion here, but I was trying to keep it as short as possible. Uh, if you have any more questions, just feel free to shoot me an email and uh, let me know. Thanks, guys.